Welcome back everyone to the Complete Pine Leaf. We are arriving here in the area of Isengard. Unfortunately in the pouring rain. And it looks like we have some Dunlandings in the way. Hello there. I have naught to say to you, Devodiad. What's this now? Men, raise your weapons! We're not through yet! Hmm. I don't think that they're in the mood for fighting at the moment. It galls me to ask aid of a Devodiad. Stay! Stay back, Hobbit! Look at what destruction these trees have brought to the Vale. Saruman is undone. Done. They allowed my men and me to flee, but I do not trust them. I know they're still here. I know that they're watching us. There's one outside the ring across the river Eisen, I swear. It will not let us live. You have delayed us too long, little one. If your foolish journey brings you to Isengard, then so be it. We shall not remain long enough for the trees to find us. Men, we go back to Dunland. Right. So, apparently there's an Ent out there somewhere. But right now, I think I need to worry about getting to the gates of Isengard first. Preferably some place that would also provide some shelter. Because this place has changed a little bit since the last time I was here. Well, the good news is that it's not riddled with orcs, which is always nice. But it looks like that the roads are no longer being maintained properly. Boy, that's quite a lot of change to come, o come over in just a couple of days at... Somebody destroyed the fortress. That's for sure. But here we are. The very walls of Isengard have been damaged by some mighty force. And it looks like the mighty force are Merry and Pippin. <laughs> Go figure. Ah. These are desperate times for the Rohirrim. I'm sure they're desperate times. And let's see, where would be a good uh, I'll set my milestone here. And look at this. Merry and Pippin. What do they have to say for themselves? Uh, hello there, Pippin. Long time no see. Hello oh. there. It's been a long time. Yes, I hope that you're well. Uh, yeah. Is it really a good idea to smoke in the rain? It looks like it's doing something to the pipe smoke. Welcome to Isengard. They look on your face is quite a thing to see, my confused friend. Welcome to Isengard. You have had a number of adventures, I expect, and would you believe that we have as well? We have all come a long way from Lothorian, haven't we? Much of the trip was rather unpleasant owing to our new f friends Ugluk and Grishnach. I suppose they're old friends now. We shan't be seeing them again, and that's a relief. Treebeard and Quickbeam are nice fellows, if a little odd, and I do not believe I have grown. I do believe I've grown several inches taller. <laughs> uh, I don't mean metaphorically, Pine Leaf, though perhaps I haven't done that as well. I mean that I actually have grown taller. Well, I suppose you could stand next to me and I could compare our heights. I'll have to do that at some point. Unfortunately, I didn't bother comparing heights before this adventure. What do you say, Mary? I think Pip is trying to confuse you on purpose. What? Pippin tried to confuse somebody on purpose? Never would have thought that possible. Yes, Pippin gets the chance to do that so infrequently that he delights in it whenever he has an opportunity to present itself. Yes, 
It seems we have gone from the fire back into the frying pan for once, and Pip and I were dragged halfway across Rohan by our captors, and though we have arrived at Isengard, it was in the strong hands of a friend and not in the whips of Saruman's orcs. It was Treebeard who brought us here, you see, and he is, well, he is Fangorn, and Fangorn is... He, apparently. This is more difficult than I expected when I began to tell it. We found some pipeweed inside the gatehouse. Now, how about you bring some more out here and we'll tell you it properly. Uh, do you have a more appropriate place for this activity that... No, alright, fine, 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 fine. Fine. Back here! This is where I'm supposed to find the good stuff. Well, here's the gatehouse. Apparently, it's not in good shape either. Yeah. So, we got floodwaters all over the place. Fortunately, there's no Urukai eating here. All sorts of things. Ah! Uh, Well, I suppose the top barrels might have some decent stuff in it now still. So I suspect that the water is going to start seeping up through the weed and I certainly wouldn't want anything on the bottom of it. Alright, I brought it for you. Allow me to refill my pipe and I can resume my story. Uh, yes, uh, yes, this is a very high-quality pipeweed of the sort they grow in the South Farthing back at home, yes. Mm. But it seems that Aragorn is troubled about something. Perhaps you should speak with him before I tell you the rest of the story, all right? And what's troubling you, Aragorn? That pipeweed was not grown at Isengard. It came from the Shire. Yes. It looks like some from the South Farthing. That weed has come from the Shire, which means the Saruman has had his eye upon this land for some while, at least. I don't like that at all. And in fact, I remember back before I left the Shire that I had to help someone who said that he wound up being taken to a long distant land and then came back before he was caught. And that could, of course, been here. Yes, as our fortune holds, the wizard will have no further chance for mischief. His interest in the Shire may have extended only to its pipeweed. Well, obviously anyone familiar with the end of the book knows that's certainly wrong. I do not doubt Saruman's ability to strike, even now. Saruman seems to be in a tough position, but I would counsel caution in our dealings with him. I don't doubt of his ability to strike even now, and a con cornered beast can be do great harm. Gandalf went ahead to the base of Orthanc. Find him, and see what he thinks of this situation. Alright, I guess I could do that as soon as I hear Mary's little story. We didn't see him at first. And why not? Well, yeah. <laughs> Small creatures. We've never seen anything like Treebeard before. Apparently, Treebeard's never seen Hobbits before, since all it says is small creature. Except oh. for trees, I suppose. He does look rather tree-ish. Hmm. Learn the nature of the curious little creatures. It looks quite lovely in the sunlight, Mary. I dare I would almost say I like the shaggy force. Oh my. Who are you? And what? Well, it is nice to meet you, Preebeard. I have never met an int before. My name is Peregrine Took, but my friends call me Pippin or Pip. I am a hobbit. So I guess this is another hobbit. You've never heard of hobbits before? 
I suppose you're always getting left off the old lists and stories. How about you had a line for us? Something like... Hmm... Half-grown hobbits, the hole dwellers. A nice one, Pip. It is a pleasure to meet you, Tweebeard. My name is Myriadoc Brandbuck, but most people call me Mary. We have become separated from our friends, and it seems that Saruman's orcs would very much like us again to bring us to their master. Alright, so I guess we should go to Welling Hall with them. He has a peculiar way about him, but he seemed friendly enough to us. Yeah. He offered to take us to his home, or one of them. He has a few. Nice that they now named the small creatures here. Ah, uh, it's incredible how small hobbits look like when you're playing an Ent. Are you certain that this is the right place, Treebeard? I don't see a house anywhere. <laughs> well, not exactly a house. Look at the size of a tree. Is it far, Treebeard? Well, not as Ents travel. <laughs> now, what, Treebeard? Behind this waterfall? Oh, so clever! Treebeard doesn't mind the rain as much as a hobbit would. It was a rather lovely place, actually. Yeah, Welling Hall. Quite homey, in its own way. In its own way, yeah. So we have arrived. I he see offered the... us a drink that would keep us... Uh, what did he say? Green and growing for a long, long time. That was it. <laughs> Green and growing for a long, long time. All right, let's see. Let's pick up the int draft. Uh, assuming I can pick it up. There you go. Uh, a little bowl? Well, maybe not a little bowl. And... Oh, is it, uh, that was the big bowl. Here, here are the little bowls. There you go. Good. And... <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> the drink tasted like water, but it was even better and more refreshing. Oh. <laughs> a healthy sensation course from the hair on my toes to the hair on my head. Right. <laughs> oh, sorry, the way they drink from those bowls was just too funny. What a delicious treat, tree beard. I refreshed and invigorated as if I had bountiful reserves of energy and could see, use them for anything at all. But... We're going to tell you how we came to this forest, aren't, weren't we? I hope I have energy enough for the tale telling. Well, yeah, they might not have much energy. I'm sure the end could last a long time in it. Our conversation eventually turned to Saruman and Isengard. Of course. Treebeard decided something had to be done. Of course. And here's the place to do it. I do not know what to expect, Treebeard. Are all of the Ents like you? Well, we'll have to see about that. Let's go into the glade. Durndingle. And here are the Ents. There are so many of them. Do you think they'll agree with you about Saruman, Treebeard? Only one way to find out, Barry. He has to ask them. And take a long time to discuss things. Yeah. 
a long time. <laughs> A very long time. <laughs> Greetings to you, my friend, from long ago. When the forest was young and we were not full grown, many seasons have turned since last we spoke together in the light of either the sun or moon. It is many earth and strides from home. Why have you called me to this place? Of course, I'm sure that's the highly abridged version of that paragraph. He agreed, bald bark, and reminisce about the conversation shared with the absent friends. Eventually, you speak of Saruman after a couple hours, probably. I have been made aware of the wizard's crimes. He worked great evil in the reaches of the forest near my own home. I agree that something must be done. What will the others say of this home? Well, thank you for your support. Let's see what the others have to say. Room, home. Hello there, Beachbone. You greet Beachbone, a handsome man. His path to, was, has crossed yours several times recently, and the memory of those pleasant conversations is still somewhat fresh. And for a polite amount of time, at least half an hour, eh, your words turn to the matter of Saruman. You speak of our neighbor as if he's an enemy. And indeed, he does not seem to be the friend he was once. Fumes rise from his home, and the small smell gets in my nose a fence. But that is not a crime. Orcs, too, could come from there any number of holes. What evidence marks Saruman as their master? Hmm. He needs more. It seemed to us they might discuss things forever. Yeah. Then we have Quick Beam. You exchange pleasantries with Quick Beam, one of the younger Ents. His home is not far from Durningle, and sometimes you have seen him walking in the sunlight among the trees. Before much time has passed, the conversation turns to Saruman. Quickbeat seems to have some idea of the wizard's crimes already. Saruman has much for which to answer. He's a tree killer, and we have been quiet neighbors for too long already. You find me overly hasty, I know. But in there seems to be little need for discussion, Fangorn. I have quite laid up my mind. All right. I tell Quick Beam of the two young hobbits I met and ask that he would watch over them while I speak with the rest of the ants in the moot. Very well. This story is taking longer than I thought it would. <laughs> Are you hungry? I have become a little peckish. Yeah. A little peckish. Now, oh, where is Mary? Oh, there he is. <laughs> see, he's so small that I didn't see him. You and certainly take a long time to make up your minds, Treebeard. I feel certain uh, we could have decided the matter six or seven times over if we were still in the Shire. Well, Quickbeam will watch over you while we... Handle this discussion. Well, if you say so, Treebeard, I think you might consider this low drip of honey in the comb quite hasty in comparison to yourself, so Pip and I will be the judge of that, if you don't mind. <laughs> that is quite a story, at least part of one. That is enough for now, I think. 
Quite a tale, was it not? Uh, yes, it was. Pip and I went to Quickbeam's house after that, but my hunger was quite gotten the best of me, and I had lost the mood of storytelling. Perhaps I'll tell you of the last march of the Ents after I've eaten, but that is enough for now, I think. Quite a tale, wasn't it? Yeah. Quite a tale. And I think that means we need to go and check with Gandalf, which is what we will do in the next episode of Complete Pine Leaf.